Good morning, friends, and welcome to Preschool Storytime with Miss Natalie. I hope you had a whole really, really great week, and I'm so excited for our story time today. This week, we're talking about a special color. It's the color of the grass outside. It's the color of some of the vegetables you eat, like broccoli or zucchini. And it also starts with a G. Do you know what color it starts with a G? You're right, gr gr green. We're talking about the color green today because you know what's coming up soon? St. Patrick's Day. And if you don't wear green then, you might get pinched by a leprechaun. Are you ready for our first story? So am I, let's get started. This book, friends, is about one of my favorite green animals, Verdi. But he's not green yet. Let's see how he turns green. In the jungle, the sun rose high in the air. A mother python sent her hatchlings out. Robe up big and green, as green as trees leave, she called. But Verdi looked at his yellow skin and his bold brown stripes and thought, why do I want to turn green? Maybe some older snakes can tell me. Uncle's Aggie and Ribbon were lazing in the sun. Verdi came up and said, why do you like to be green? But Verdi looked nervous because they weren't doing a whole lot of fun things. Verdi could not be an imagine, imagine being in a hurry to be like them and turn green. So he slithered away. He went to talk to Dozer who was snoozing in a tree. Hello, said Verdi. Will you climb trees with me? I'm tired, growled Dozer. Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not lazy and boring. They were also rude. At the top of a tree, Verdi wrapped his tail around one branch and gripped another with his mouth. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and move so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. <gasps> and he flew in the air. He made a spiral. The greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. He'll be lucky to turn green at all, Ribbon said. If he lives that long, said Umbles. But one day, Verity's skin began to peel and underneath was green. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle and I'm still turning green. He raced to the river and grabbed some leaves. Well, if I can't grab the screen, I'll scrub it off, he thought. His splashing caught the eye of a large fish. Mmm, the old fish said. Lunch. Uh-oh. But before the fish could grab Verdi, the snake bit him on the nose. Achoo! The fish sneezed and sent Verdi into the air, where he landed and slithered out of reach. Well, that was close. And now he was covered in mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy and brown, but it sure beats being green. So he left the mud on. But the mud soon dried and got hard and Verdi could move. If he did, it chipped and cracked. And as it fell away, he could see his body was greener than ever. This is terrible, cried Verdi. He pictured himself hanging in drooping loops complaining and worrying all day. He looked up at the sky where the sun was a beautiful yellow, just like he used to be. He pulled the vine to the top of a tree and launched into the air, startling some birds. He became so dizzy, sure the sun would turn him golden. But Verity forgot he would fall back to earth. Whippity wobbity flip flap wham. Plummeting through the trees, he landed in a crooked sprawl and he couldn't move. Help, he croaked. As usual, the greens had been watching. They moved quickly. Didn't we say it would come to this, Umble said. Haggy sighed. Luckily, he still got two good eyes. And they gently let the Verdi up where they could watch him until he healed. 
splinted to a branch, Verity had no choice but to listen to the greens. Remember how I used to streak across the forest, Ribbon said? Quick as lightning, said Aggie, and I climbed dragged trees and they, they were nothing. They grew taller than you know. The things I dared to run down, Umbles bragged. Verdi was astonished, I mean surprised. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs. What happened? Ribbons crashed. I almost lost an eye, and Umbles almost choked on a boar. No, no, we like the quiet life. One afternoon, Umble said, looks like you're ready to go. You're welcome to join us, said Aggie. But Bertie wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go. So he stayed put, and as the sun came down, he listened to the forest come alive. Wow. Look at all those beautiful forest animals and plants. That's a lot of green. Time passed. The sun and the moon took turns. Verity watched the moon get smaller and thinner and then get round again. He became so green he blended in with the leaves and animals wouldn't see him. One morning as he basked in the sun, two small snakes approached. Get a, lot, get a load of that old green guy, one whispered. Do you think he ever moves? I seriously doubt it, said the other. They're just like I used to be, thought Verdi. And now I'm what I was afraid to be. But he smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me, he asked. With you? The yellow snakes were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Verdi replied. Although he was a little worried about putting out his eye. And soon with practice, the three snakes formed a performed perfect triple figure eight. Verdi laughed as he leapt and looped with his friends. I may be very green and very big, but I'm still me. And that's the end. Well, Verdi was a little afraid of growing up and turning green, but I think he ended up liking it. What do you think? We have a fun song all about speckled frogs, friends. Maybe you've heard it before. If you have, I want you to sing along with me. And if you have it, let's listen to the words and maybe you'll learn them with me together. Are you ready? Let's count to three. One, two, three. Five little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into a pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are four speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Four little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into a pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are three speckled frogs, glub, glub. Three little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into a pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are two speckled frogs, glub, glub. Two little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into a pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are, do you know how many there are left? That's right. Now there is one speckled frog, glub, glub. One little speckled frog sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. It jumped into a pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are no speckled frogs, glub, glub. Good job, friends. That's a fun song to sing. And these speckled frogs, well, they're gonna be green, just like our color of our story time. And now we're gonna read a story, friends, about a grandpa who's green. And this is called Grandpa Green. This is a really good story. I think you're gonna like it. He was born a really long time ago. Before computers or cell phones or even television. He grew up on a farm with pigs and corn and carrots. And eggs. In fourth grade, he got chicken pox, but not from chickens. He had to stay home from school, 
So he read stories about secret gardens and wizards and a little engine that could. In middle school, he got his first kiss. After high school, his wish was to study horticulture. It's kind of like working with plants a little bit and gardening. But he went to a world war instead. He met his future wife in a little cafe. And when the war was over, they got married. They had many happy years together and never ever thought. At least that's how he tells it. They had kids, grandkids, and a great grandkid. That's me. Well, him, not me. He used to remember everything. Now, he's pretty old. And sometimes he forgets things, like his favorite floppy straw hat. It's on an elephant. Is that a real elephant or an elephant made out of plants? I think it's made out of plants too. But the important stuff The garden remembers for him. Let's look at one side. <gasps> wow. And now the other side. <gasps> oh, I think his great grandson is making his grandpa out of plants too. Well, friends, all those were things called sculptures, but they're head sculptures, so they're made out of green plants. I hope you liked that story as much as I liked sharing it with you. Now friends, it is time for us to do our yoga pose of the day. Today, we sing about speckled frogs, so we're gonna learn how to turn into frogs all on our own. If you're not sitting like I am, I want you to sit with your shins, that's the top part of your leg, pressing into the floor. We're gonna put our hands in our laps, but you know what we're gonna do? Take our left hand and push it into the ground, and our right hand and push it into the ground, and then you're gonna push and come up onto your toes, just like this. And then if you wanna hop, you can hop, hop, just like that. Maybe if you're a really big, strong frog, you hop and your whole feet come off the ground, and so do your hands. Can you rip it like a frog? Rip it, rip it. Are you a green speckled frog? Are you a bullfrog that goes rabbit? Or are you a tiny little tree frog hiding in a vine? And when you're ready to be done, you put your knees back on the ground and you sit down just like this. Good job, friends. I hope you had fun being frogs with me. And I hope that you are whatever kind of frog that you want. And now it is time for our last story. And now friends, we're gonna read a book all about the great big green. The thing is, the thing is green. And the green is, the green is green. And by green, I mean real mean green. I mean dragon green, anaconda green, electric eel green, Green iguanas in the sun green. I mean this thing has got all kinds of green. It's got green turtles in turtle green ponds and a green tree frog on a girl's arm. It's got green grasshoppers springing through groomed green lawns and green stink bugs and green dragonflies. It's even got an old green door. And it's got more. It's got dark and dangerous greens. Greens you've never seen greens. Ocean floor greens, tornado sky greens. Tiger's eye greens. Those are some cool green eyes. It's chock full of green things that are good for you. Your eat your broccoli greens, your bunch of green grapes greens, your watermelon sparkling in the sun greens. 
This thing has got it all. It's got six green socks and a green row and 10 green toes and green tennis balls that glow way beyond evergreen. This thing gives green geckos on green leaves feeling green and green moths feeling in the great dark and green praying mantises on their green knees. It's a great and gorgeous green. What is this thing? It's so many greens. A light bright, just right, watch it grow. It says go, shade of green. Have you guessed yet? Do you need another clue? Have you guessed what it is? Think rolling waves of green green, thick green vines climbing high green trees. Mountains and mountains of green, Billions of waves reaching out, dark green seas. All wrapped in one green ball and hung like an ornament in the sky. What a thing it must be to see the whole green thing floating by. It's true, the thing is, the thing is green. <gasps> Except where it's blue. <gasps> Do you know what that is? You're right, that's planet Earth. That's where we live. And that's the end. Let's look at this one more time. Oh, that's right, it's green all over, except for it's blue, because that's where the oceans are. Friends, thank you so much for joining me for our preschool story time all about the color green. I hope you enjoyed learning how to become little bouncing frogs and singing our fun frog song and reading some books together. I will see you next week where we're going to talk about the very special holiday all about the color green. I said it in the beginning of our story time. Do you remember what it is? That's right, it's St. Patrick's Day. I hope you have a really great Friday and let's say goodbye with a wave. Are you ready? One, two, three. Bye!